this computer. <laughs> Hi, it's Tina and Tim again. And today we're going to talk about how to find a father's rights attorney. And we're going to let Tim take it away. One of the things that happens is when a person calls in for a consultation at our office, um, I explain to them, of course, I have to sell our office. So I explain to them why they should retain us. But I always tell them to shop around. It's always smart to shop around. You want to have the most information possible so you make the best decision with your money. So in doing so, there are certain things that you should be looking for in an attorney and certain things you should be asking. A prime example is ask them, what makes up the bulk of your practice? What types of cases do you handle? And what are the percentages of those cases? For example, if I called in and asked Tina, Miss Bennett, What's the bulk of your practice and what's the breakdown? And the breakdown is this, 99% of all cases are either family court or I, uh, or I represent people in a divorce or a post, anything dealing with family court in a matrimonial action. I don't so do, do you, wait, hang on to Go ahead. I rarely, if ever do a traffic ticket. I rarely, if ever, do a real estate transaction and the extent of doing a real estate transaction is giving a recommendation for another real property attorney because I'm not going to do it. And rarely, if ever, do we do a small claims action. So really the bulk of the practice deals with family law. And that includes IDV court, integrated domestic violence court, or any current client that has a criminal action that results from an order of protection. Those are the only times the two will collide. But I know plenty of other attorneys that claim to be father's rights attorneys, when in fact, the bulk of their practice is not only representing women, um, but they do other things. They do criminal, they do real estate, they do personal injury cases. So that's why Tim was saying, what is the bulk percentage of your practice? You don't want to go to somebody that says father's rights, where 80% of their caseload is as a real estate attorney. Right, Tim? Because Correct. you're going to get somebody who doesn't really know what they're doing in court, and they're not familiar with the procedures or the attorneys, and, right? Correct. And there's a reason for that. And I use this analogy. I'm gonna, I've always used it. I always will use it. When you go to medical school, you study all medicine. You have to study all of the different variations, whether it's cardiology, pulmonology, doesn't matter. At the very end, you will specialize in something or focus on something. Lawyers study all aspects of law when they're in school. They learn a little bit of everything and then they focus. So if I have a heart attack, I'm not going to go see a podiatrist. Doesn't make sense. Not going to really know how to treat my heart attack. If I have a father's rights case or a family law case, I'm not going to go see my uncle Vinny because he went to law school and he's going to give me a discount. But really, he handles personal injury. Or, it doesn't make sense. Or he just graduated or he just passed the bar and has zero experience. Or like Tim said, you're, you're, you're getting a deal or this one's cheaper than the other one. Just remember this, just like with contractors, just because you get the cheapest price doesn't mean it's going to be done right. Or you're going and to- As my father always by. said, you get what you pay for. And here's the other issue. That doesn't necessarily mean, you know, there's people that get assigned counsel. That doesn't mean people who are assigned attorneys, they are good attorneys. They but, are. But you know what? You have to feel comfortable with who's representing you and have that comfort level when it's going back and forth. But in terms of our practice, versus other people that claim or advertise to be father's rights attorneys. It's the, it's our environment, the work environment we have, and it's our personal beliefs. So you have to keep that in mind. We advocate for men for a reason, my personal reason, Tim's personal reason, and anybody else who works with the office. So if you go to another firm where, you know, I call it churning and burning, their big father's rights lawyer, that's what they do. Well, if you get somebody right out of law school and they have no experience with knowing what it's like not to see their children 
or didn't come from a background where they were separated. You have no basis to represent somebody. You have no background whatsoever. So keep those things in mind. And that same thing goes to why we're not really happy about the AFC program in New York State, the law guardians or attorneys for children, because it gives too much power to a child to choose a parent. So our latest efforts are trying to encourage the court to enforce their own orders, to actually have consequences for parents who won't follow the order. Making Tim or Tina go on parenting time schedules is extremely important. Giving a child the right to choose their parent is not a good thing because then children realize parents are disposable. So don't think for one minute you're doing your child a favor by telling them he doesn't have to go or telling the other parent, well, he doesn't really feel like it today because of whatever reason, right, Tim? <clears throat> exactly, but I mean, that, that's a big piece. And that goes to, again, when we're talking about choosing your attorney and, and understanding these things, asking those conversations and questions and things like, what, what is your premise? What do you advocate for? What are your beliefs as a law firm? I mean, Tina kind of went over a little bit about how right now we're looking at the AFC program. Um, you know, our personal stories, what we bring to the table. Um, you know, we represent 99% men. Do we represent women? A very small portion we do. Um, you can't you can't discriminate and say I'm not representing you because you're a lady, that there's all sorts of legal issues with that. But the bulk of our practice is men. Why is that? Well, we understand when Tina's talking about children here, the premise is best interest of the child. We know the best interest for the child is to have both parents. And when you allow the, a program or a person to give the power to the child to advocate on their own behalf, well, then you're getting into this very dicey area of, is there one parent speaking in their ear? One parent's more fun. I want to go with the fun parent. Kids don't have the ability to make those informed decisions. Um, we're also up against a system that is structurally set to disenfranchise the father. If we look through history, through time, men are the providers. They work these jobs that require them to be away from the home. Well, now that makes you an unfit parent in the eyes of, of the court. So we, we're going to give custody to the mother. These are things that we deal with every day. These are things that we're passionate about. You have to ask your attorney, you know, what do you focus in? We focus in father's rights. Well, what does that mean? What do you advocate for? What is your platform? Ask your attorneys these questions. We don't know what area you're in. You could be sitting in North Dakota right now watching this video. But if you're like any other human being in the technical age, you're going to get on your laptop. You're going to type in father's rights attorney in my area. And you're probably going to get 40 that pop up because everybody's got a gimmick. You got the DWI guy on the billboard because he does, you know, you get drunk and drive, call that guy. You slip and fall, call this guy. Okay, but you got to ask the <laughs> question. Anybody can pay for advertising. That doesn't mean you're getting a good attorney. <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm laughing, but it's true. And that's what we're up against. We want other attorneys to join us. We're just one small law firm. We can't represent everyone, but we try to make it a point to put forth issues to judges and to the other side. They don't wanna hear it from us, but guess what? If you're having a hearing or a hearing, which is could mean anything, it's a, from a court appearance to a trial where the area we're at, but at least then you'll have a record for your kid because when your kid turns 22 and is giving you grief that, why didn't you fight for me? Do you know what it was like living with that parent? Well, you know what? Come here, Tim. Let me show you the transcript where, you know what? I actually did hire somebody and they put forth everything that I believed was necessary for you to be with me half the time or full time or whatever. So just be careful of who you hire, right, Tim? Exactly. A great point. Great point. It's not like Tina said earlier, you have attorneys who are churn and burn. They're just whatever case they can take, they're going to take and out the door you go. We push the limits. We, we do. Tina gets up and she will call judges out. 
she will throw the law in its ear and say, it's unjust, it's not fair. This program is obsolete because we're passionate about the family unit. And the biggest piece of the family unit missing in today's society is the father. So that's what we do. Don't get caught up in gimmicks of attorneys. Don't get caught up, ask questions. And ask well, them. You're right, Go ask ahead. them, but also, you know what? Don't look at where an attorney's office is. Look, somebody who also works with us and we laugh, she talks about the whole lawyer look. We are uh, in yes. a technological age where just because you have law books behind you doesn't mean you've ever read them or picked them up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So don't get caught up in what a lawyer's environment may look like. The best lawyer might not have an office and work out of his or her home and needs to meet you at the local diner or a library because you know what? They're on, they're on the run and they're on their own. So maybe they don't have a, a big bulk of cases, but that doesn't mean they're less qualified. So keep an eye out, look at everything. Look at the personality of your attorney. Look at the environment that they choose to work out of. See whether or not they are technology. They know how to use technology. You can't, I'm sorry, I mean, old school lawyers that can't even type. Just think about it. That is not cost efficient for a litigant. You need your lawyers to be able to type. That way, when you meet with them and they need to do paperwork, they do it contemporaneously with you. So you feel like you're part of the process. And look at their staff. Look at who they hire. Look who, who they have working. It, you really, people, you are investing not only your money, but when it comes to, in our, in our practice, right, family law, the biggest thing riding on the line is your family and your loved one and your child. You do not want to gamble with that. You have to really, really be smart and invested in moving forward. Family court is a nightmare. It's mean. It's nasty. It, it is the ugliest of the uglies. Know who you're working with. Invest in somebody you know has your back and is going to stand up for you and isn't out just to make a dollar off a gimmick. Right. Or the attorney that reaches over the table, see my hand and I'm looking down, that pats you on the hand and really doesn't get any information, but says, give me your money and I'll handle it. What in the world does that mean? Even for myself looking for a lawyer, even Tim, I've come across that also. And it makes me extremely uncomfortable. You need to talk to the lawyer. Lawyers should be able to talk direct to you. You should be able to engage with them, right? They shouldn't talk yes. down and to you. Them. You brought up a really good point, okay? So let's say you go to that attorney and, and he says, I only hand, I, I handle DWIs. Okay, Tina just said, when she looks for an attorney, guess what? She's an attorney. She doesn't represent herself. Even attorneys know, who would you recommend? Favorite question to ask an attorney. People call us all the time and say, I have to do property. Do you handle that? No, we don't. Well, do, but I have someone. And it's, I recommend the people we use. They're trusted. It's not about me. Now, could we handle it? We could. We could take their money. We could do it. But it's not right. It, it's grimy. It's not what we're about. So we know that's not our expertise. We pass it off to somebody who is qualified. So ask your attorney when you're talking to them, who do you know? Who would you use? Always a good question to ask. Absolutely. So we're going to leave you with that. If you want to write comments or whatever and like to learn a little bit more, we'll keep engaging on it. But in our practice, I mean, we're doing this through eCourt Coach. I know what attorneys I'm dealing with. I am playing a specific game and I remember everything. So if you see a lawyer that goes into court, not knocking anybody, but they better be ready to go if there's a trial. And that means you need to have all the facts of that case up here, not scurrying around looking for it. So there's, there's other questions to ask, whether they're there capable are. of handling trials, right, Tim? So Correct. And so if you are in New York State, uh, look up Tina Bennett, ESQ, Tina Bennett Esquire. 
We're in New York. If you're online, you can look at ecorpcoach.com, ondemandmediators.com, and supervisionondemand.com. Those are all three companies that we manage, that we own and operate. Uh, everything within Family Court at your disposal on the internet, have a look at it. Great. And we'll see you again on the web. <laughs>